I was born Lillian Mary Bailey in Liverpool on the 18th of February 1918 to a white British-born mother of Irish parents and a black British Barbadian-born migrant father. My parents married in 1913 in Fylde, Lancashire. I had two older brothers, Francis, born 1914, and James, born in 1915. When I was eight years old, our father, James Marcus Bailey, died in January 1927, and our mother, Lillian Bader, Nee McGowan, deceased at the end of that same year. Aged just nine years old, I was raised in a convent, where I remained until I was 20 because nobody would employ me. Most of the other convent girls left to find jobs when they were 15, despite the fact that I had better qualifications. Persistence in applying for positions meant I eventually found a job in domestic service. I experienced difficulty obtaining employment because of my skin colour, and I was dismissed from a position in the NAAFI, Navy, Army and Air Forces Institute's military canteen at Catterick Camp in Yorkshire after about seven weeks when it was discovered that my father was from the West Indies and not born in Britain. My district manager defended my position, however the British authorities enforced the racial prejudice as clear legal evidence that I was unfit to do my job. I returned to domestic service, but... I felt embarrassed when a group of soldiers expressed surprise that I wasn't doing war work. I thought, how could I tell them that a coloured Breton was not acceptable, even in the humble NAAFI? I heard an announcement on Una Martin's BBC radio programme, Hello West Indies, that the RAF was accepting recruits with a West Indian background, so I applied. On the 28th of March 1941... I became one of the first black women to serve in the military in England and to work in the WAAF, Women's Auxiliary Air Force. I passed my course first class and started work as an instrument repairer and doubled my pay to 44 shillings a fortnight. I was later promoted to leading aircraft woman, then acting corporal. I would proudly wear my stripes at the dinner table set aside for junior NCOs, non-commissioned officers. It was my ability, determination and enthusiasm that paid off when I qualified as an instrument repairer. I was posted at RAF Shawbury, where I was responsible for ensuring the aircraft instruments were in full working order before each mission. While I was training as an instrument repairer, I heard the news that my brother James Bailey, who was in the Merchant Navy, was killed in action at sea when his ship, the Western Chief, was hit Francis, also a serviceman, was eventually invalided out of the Merchant Navy. I, like many other black people across the British Empire, joined the war effort because I was patriotic, and if Hitler had invaded England, we, black people, would have ended up in the ovens. Concentration camps and murder was a fate that befell black people in Nazi Germany and occupied Europe. I married Ramsay Bader, a black British soldier, a tank driver in the Royal Artillery in 1943. Ramsay took part in the D-Day operations. Ramsay and I moved to Northamptonshire to raise our two sons, Adrian and Geoffrey. My youngest son, Geoffrey, flew helicopters in the Royal Navy and subsequently became an airline pilot. We are a family of three generations of military service in the British Armed Forces. Father served in the First World War, his three children served in the Second World War. I married a coloured man who was in the Second World War, as was his brother, who was decorated for bravery in Burma. Their father also served in the First World War. Our son was a helicopter pilot. He served in Northern Ireland. So all in all, I think we've given back more to this country than we've received. After the war, I completed a Bachelor of Arts degree at London University and became a teacher. I moved to Bournemouth, Dorset, where I stayed until my death at the age of 97 in 2015.